Feature scaling is yet another fundamental concept critical to machine learning. So what is feature scaling? The idea is simple. We need all variables to be on the same scale, say between 0 and 1. So if we have features such as the weight of a kettlebell, maybe that weight could take on values between 5 pounds and 100 pounds. However, instead of representing the weight in pounds, we may choose to represent those values between, say, 0 and 1, where 0 is the lowest possible weight and 1 is the highest possible weight. The scale we choose is not super important as long as we pick reasonable numbers for our range of values. The two most common ranges are 0 to 1 by using min-max normalization, or approximately negative 3 to positive 3 when using standard deviations from the mean. The important thing is that each feature is on the same scale, so if feature A can only take on values between 0 and 1, we want to make sure feature B can also only take on values between 0 and 1. This slide illustrates a data set and highlights the first row of data. Hopefully this is obvious, but I should point out you will never normalize across the horizontal axis. This doesn't make sense. What you will do is normalize each numeric column. We want to compare apples to apples, so when creating our new scale, we have to create that scale for each column individually. This means we will scale all values for GDP per capita between 0 and 1 based on the relationship of that set of numbers. Then we will create a new scaling between 0 and 1 for the population category. We do this for all numeric categories in our data set. Now we can get into how scaling actually takes place. This is the formula for min-max scaling. It's pretty simple. We start with our list of values from a given feature as shown here. The numbers in this list are 1, 2, 5, and 7. We then find the minimum value of that list, which is 1, and then the maximum value from that list, which is 7. We will have to scale each number, but let's say we want to scale the number 5, which represents the third element in the list. We plug in 5 as the value we are scaling. We plug in 1 as the minimum value. And finally, we plug in 7, which is the maximum value from that list. This returns a scaled value of 2 thirds. After we scale each number in the list, we end up with this new list of scaled values. Notice the smallest item in the original list was 1, and it transformed into 0. The largest item was 7, and it transformed into 1. The alternative method used for scaling is standardization, and this is the formula. x represents the current value you are scaling, mu represents the average of all elements in the original list, and sigma represents the standard deviation of the original list. Here you can see we have the same values we had in our first example. If we again scale the value of 5, we plug in 5 for x. We plug in our value of mu, which is 3.75. And finally, we plug in 2.38 for sigma, as that is a standard deviation of our list. That gives us the final scaled value of 0.52. This means the value is 0.52 standard deviations above the mean. This shows us the entire list after being scaled. You can see some numbers are positive and some are negative. The list takes on a range of negative 1.15 to positive 1.36. The reason I said the scale would exist between negative 3 and positive 3 is that statistically speaking, about 99% of data that has a normal distribution will take on a value between negative 3 and positive 3 standard deviations from the mean. That does not mean the smallest and largest values in a data set have to be negative 3 and positive 3, respectively, after being scaled. It just means, generally, numbers will fall inside that range. So why is scaling important? There are two big reasons. First, gradient descent will struggle to converge, meaning it will be slow to find the best solution or possibly not find the best solution at all. In this image, you can see a representation of the gradient plane of normalized versus unnormalized features. The center of those rings is where the bottom of our loss curve exists and where we want our gradient descent algorithm to take us. The lines that have been drawn through the rings represent the steps we are taking with our gradient descent algorithm. With unnormalized features, that gradient plane can end up being very skinny and ovular, which will lead us to taking indirect steps to the global minima. On the other hand, the normalized data can much more easily take steps in the correct direction for quick convergence. The second reason we need to scale our data is distance metrics will be skewed by differing scales. This will ruin any attempts at proper clustering. This example will help illustrate that fact. We would like to compare people's heights and weights. You can see we have person A, B, C, and D with their height and weight listed. We want to decide whether A and B are more similar or whether C and D are more similar. What do you think? 
I would say clearly A and B are more similar because their height is the exact same and their weight is relatively close. C and D seem less similar. While they are also relatively close in weight, person C is an entire foot taller than person D, which is a huge difference. This is the formula for distance, and I will use this to measure the similarity. Now we can simply plug in our numbers. We subtract the height values and square them. We subtract the weight values and square them. Then sum up those terms and take the square root. This leaves us with a distance of 12 between person A and person B. Now if we do this for person C and D, we can once again plug in our values and come up with a distance of 10.05. As C and D had a smaller distance, this means they are more similar. However, this doesn't make much sense. Clearly A and B are more similar, but this is because our values are not scaled. The difference in height between C and D is one foot, but since weight is a much larger scale, it overpowers the significant difference in height. So let's rework this problem by scaling the data. For this example, I have used min-max normalization. The numbers are a bit contrived, but consider these four people came from a larger sample where we had a minimum height of four feet and a maximum height of seven feet. For weight, let's assume we observed a minimum of 90 pounds and a max of 300 pounds. I went ahead and scaled these numbers accordingly. Now if we plug these values into our distance formula, we see A and B have a distance of 0.03. After scaling and calculating the distance of person C and D, we get a distance of 0.34. This means our distance metric says A and B are much more similar, which makes way more sense. So hopefully that illustrates why scaling data is so important. It is possible that there may be situations where scaling data is unnecessary, but none that I can easily think of. Just assume it is always necessary to scale your data when building a machine learning model.